Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the widgets of the Android design support library like the text input layout, the floating action button, the tab layout. Before I start, there are two things that I would like to point out. First, if you go to Google and if you type SlideNerd Udemy here, you will find my link right here where we have all our courses on how to make apps for Android, iOS, the iWatch and Android Wear. Second, if you go to my channel Slide Nerd, if you go to playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the material design videos right here inside the playlist called Android Material Design Tutorial. Be sure to check these two things out. Now let's get back to our topic. I currently have an activity here called Second Activity. If you take a look at its layout, it contains nothing except an edit text over here. Let's try to put our text input layout, which is the first widget that we would like to analyze in this video. The way you put a text input layout is like this. You put your edit text inside that layout and you specify the match palette and wrap content attributes. So there's my second activity and currently as you notice it says email address at the top. Now to make you guys understand exactly what's happening with this text input layout, I have added two of them. One is the email address, the other is the password. If you run the app right now, this is what you see. You have the password over here at the bottom and the email address at the top. If I type something here, then the password hint is displayed over here. But if I click here, notice what happens. The hint goes at the top. If I remove the email and if I go to the password, look at that. I can keep switching between the two and look at that nice animation that it gives me while I'm typing and the hint. I can also set an error message on this text input layout. Let me show you how to do that. So going back to my second activity, I have my two variables. I initialize them for the two input layouts the text input layout that we have and then I call this method set error which says email cannot be blank and password cannot be blank now when you're on the app this is what you see you have this nice error message at the bottom of this edit text saying that the email cannot be blank now it hasn't really considered whether the person is entering something or is going to enter something the best place I think you can call this method would be inside a text watcher or inside an on-click listener when the user is going to submit this information where you can set the error message based on the entered input. So here is an improvised version for this app which has a login button. When this button is clicked, the submit method here in the second activity is called where I'm going to validate the user inputs. When both the email and the password are blank, I have a snack bar displaying over here which is a cousin of the toast. In the first parameter, this is going to be the root of the layout file inside which you want to display the snack bar. In my case, the root is going to be a relative layout called mroot which has been initialized inside the onCreate method. Second is going to be a text that's going to ask you the message that you want to display. Third is going to be the length whether it's going to be short or long. Fourth is going to be the action that appears inside the snack bar. In my case, it's some text called dismiss. And when that text is clicked, there is a view dot on click listener object that will be triggered, which is M snack bar click listener. This is again declared right at the top where you see M snack bar listener with its on click method where I have currently done nothing inside. So the snack bar is going to finally show up on the screen when you call the dot show method here. Now let's take a look at this in action. So there's my app, currently both the fields are blank and now I click login, look at that, the snack bar appears right there. I can click dismiss and something will happen inside the on click listener or it disappears automatically if you try to swipe. If I enter something in the email however and then try to click login, the password pops up an error message. If I try to enter something in the password and if I keep the email empty, that's gonna pop up a different kind of error message which you see above. And if both the fields are full and I click login, this is where I'm supposed to do whatever I want to do, which currently does nothing by the way. The next widget of interest is the floating action button. Right here in the documentation, take a look at this. It's android.support.design.widget.floating action button. If you read the documentation, you will find out that it extends from the image view, which means you can get events from it using the same on-click listener, which you have been doing all this time. Let's go back to Android Studio and take a look at what it feels to add a floating action button inside activity underscore second dot XML. Currently a relative layout is the root and if you go to the bottom, I have added a fab over here for you guys. So width of wrap content, height of wrap content, align parent bottom is true and right is true so that the floating action button is placed at the bottom right inside the relative layout. 
I've specified the source here as IC underscore add underscore black, which is a simple icon that has a plus sign on it. And there's a border width of 2 dp and a fab size of normal. Now, there are two options to keep the fab. It can be a normal size or it can be a mini sized one over here. And you can also customize the ripple color, which currently I have set to color primary dark. Now, again, remember, you won't be seeing ripples on the older devices. You will see them only after the lollipop ones. Let's take a look at this in action. So once the app runs, select the navigation drawer, go to the item 2 and there is our mini floating action button on the right hand side. If you closely observe, the 2dp on the outer edge seems to have a slightly different color from the one that is inside which would be the 2dp border that I just specified. I should ideally place a white icon over here but here it is black if you click on this the click is handled by the view dot on click listener take a look at that there's a snack bar that pops up sees fab was clicked every time you click on that the way you do that is very simple you go to the second activity that is our code you create the variable floating action button you initialize that variable and you set the on click listener right over here which is m fab click listener now this is what m fab click listener basically looks like it has a snack bar that simply displays without any actions if you notice our app when it displays the snack bar the snack bar kind of overlaps with the floating action button to solve that we need to use a layout called the coordinator layout so a lot of things still remain to be addressed in the design support library how to add tabs how to use the coordinator layout all these things are coming up in the meantime don't forget to go to google and type slide node udemy our social account slide node twitter and slide node facebook and all the code for this video and the rest of the videos if you google slide node github thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day